Welcome to the Echo Cast, episode 82. This one's going to be episode 2 in review for the episode 2 DLC for The Division 2. I am Bond Diesel, uh, 2018 Ubisoft star player, uh, streamer, annoying dude on Twitter. Today, on this podcast about The Division 2, its community, news, updates, so on and so forth, we will do a state of the game recap. My thoughts on episode two, some thoughts on the specifics of episode two, uh, some happenings in the community in the last week or so, some uh, a listener question, and some personal and content updates. If you would like to support this podcast and my other content, please check out patreon.com slash the echo cast. Thanks to Tim, Ozzy, Mike, Luis, Jose, Joe, Hassan, Darren, DJ, Christian, and Iceman for helping support the show and the rest of my content and helping keep this thing going. Okay, so on Stay of the Game, this is the shortest recap I will probably ever do. (laughs) So uh, today we had Hamish and Chris talking about episode two, uh, the release and some known issues and some expected fixes. Uh, I'm going to be totally honest. Um, This was basically just a big recap of episode two and some changes and additions. And then they talked about some issues um, and the timeline for the fixes on those. So if you want specifics, I would just go watch the broadcast on Twitch, Twitter, not Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, and wherever. Um, I don't feel like going through every single one, if you want me to be totally honest. Uh, what I will talk about, though, is in uh, some Division 2 news here. Um, uh, talk a bit about the uh, the Episode 2 and kind of how I'm feeling about it so far. So, uh, to break it up into some pieces. So, the first part is the Pentagon. Um, it's interesting because, like, with the Pentagon, uh, so there's, like, an intro mission where you essentially unlock a safe house. And then there's two missions um, beyond that. Uh, there's one that takes place um, like in the Pentagon and sort of under it. Um, and then there's another mission that takes place uh, under the Pentagon and, and slightly away from it. Um, I'll try to stay away from spoilers the best I can, but you know, I may slip to be totally honest. Uh, but that said, um, so what's interesting is with no expectation um it's good uh, the the intro mission's cool it's actually a little bit longer than i expected and um the two missions are great uh i feel like the first one was really long in a good way and then the second one was a bit shorter but um was really cool it had kind of a a different uh feel than most of the missions ever have uh in division so um they're really cool the problem with Pentagon is if you start thinking about what it could have been and what it was probably supposed to be. Um, one thing that I noticed is, you know, in the safe house, you know, isn't it kind of weird that, you know, like Kinley College, we had these three little missions to do and there's not really anything resembling a safe house. There's this big wide open area. Um, I think the expedition is another thing that was probably meant to be something much bigger. Um, the expedition I think is interesting because if you think if you've played if you've played it, the 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 main area where there's not even enemies in the expedition is awesome and it's full of cover and you can have your gun out and there's loot and stuff everywhere. I you know the expedition I think was meant to be probably something different than what it became and i think the pentagon has that feel too because the pentagon i mean it literally has a safe house um that's a shared space so you go into that safe house and there's other agents there Um, that doesn't make any sense for just two missions so if i had to go out on what is probably not that big of a limb i would say that that uh, was probably meant to be something much bigger and that that social area was was probably supposed to be 
um, kind of a hub. And if I had to really go out on a wild guess, I would say that um, kind of what I've been predicting ever since they announced um, the episodes, I'm willing to bet that the Pentagon was supposed to be underground 2.0. Um, and I bet that that safe house was supposed to be basically like the, the underground hub that we had in division one. And then you were supposed to go off into the Pentagon into these, like basically endless missions, um, and that would go all over the Pentagon. I've said it before, but the Pentagon is at least at one point was the largest office building in the world. And, um, you know, that lends itself so well to this idea that, you know, there's basically an endless number of areas to go, especially when you take into account all of the underground stuff. So, um, what shouldn't be a spoiler is that part of these two missions is going down into the DARPA labs, which, oh, yeah. uh, DARPA is a research, um, branch of the government and spe specifically for the military um, that works on stuff that if you've heard of something that DARPA did, it's because you were allowed to hear about it and it was probably developed 10, 15, 20 more or more years ago. Um, and when you go into the DARPA labs and this mission, uh, you, you see that it's really cool. Um, it, it, the, so, so don't get me wrong. The, the two missions are awesome. Um, they're great additions to the missions. Uh, <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Um, but all it does for me is kind of make me kind of cringe and think like, man, what could have been? Even if it was a thing where like these two missions were there and then after you beat them, there was like field research. Like, you know, run five challenging Pentagon runs and you get this blueprint or these materials or something. I mean, it could have essentially, you know, been something like the underground or even the underground had a mission that opened up the underground. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure it comes down to time and resources, um, knowing that, knowing that the Pentagon was done by Sophia which is a smaller um, dev team. It isn't a core part of the, it's not massive. Um, <clears throat> they essentially kind of just parted this episode out um, to them to do this part of it. Um, and, and either they just didn't do what they were supposed to do or they had to scale back or maybe I'm wrong. And, and my idea of Underground 2.0 was never a thing, um, but I suspect it was. But it's just a hunch. Um, but getting back to my original point, um, it, it's, it's worth playing. I, I would go play it. The problem is, is that it's almost kind of like, you know, white Oak and it's almost kind of like the zoo. Um, and it's nah, maybe not so much like Kenley, but you know, there's just like not a ton of incentive to go back. Um, which is just a bummer because it's a really cool space. Um, I'm sure I'll go back. I, I like the mission. So I, I am really curious to go back and play. You know the, the the hard challenging even heroic um versions uh to if they do it i suspect that they'll do um invaded of them at some point um it, i'd be kind of curious um what's cool about every invaded mission if you don't know is that every invaded mission um has a little side story where um you know there's a reason it's invaded so in division one, when there was a legendary mission that, you know, normally had, you know, Rikers, and then now it has these legendary uh, LMB, uh, I think that the general idea was, well, the LMB is retaking the city with these elite troops. I don't know if there was ever really any deep story behind why they existed. Um, and then don't even get me started on why just all of a sudden they had hunters as part of their crew, I just don't, I just pretend that never existed. So Pentagon missions, definitely worth playing. If you have the season pass, go play them. If you don't, you know, definitely check them out next week. Uh, the new specialization is really cool. Um, if anything, I'm kind of wondering if there's ever going to be kind of a pass back on the other specializations, um, because I feel like the new specialization, which is the technician 
is from like top to bottom like the the most like impact like i feel like its attributes impact the player the most so like if you unlock everything on the technician you just get 50 percent more skill power and then one of the unlocks i think there's four levels of it gives you 10 percent more skill power so what that means is that if you fully deck out your specialization is that you could run a, a fairly small amount of skill power but still have what's essentially a skill build so you could have like a damage build or even an armor build or some hybrid type of build that also has really good skill power uh and and i think that you know i'm trying to unlock all of, all of the unlocks because i'm really curious to try to figure out maybe even kind of a you know, a hybrid PVP, PVE, do everything kind of build with this. Uh, on top of that, the specialist weapon is really cool. It's a six barreled rocket launcher that um, locks on the six different enemies or locks on to one enemy repeatedly uh, and does more damage to them. And it's really cool. Um, it's the same issue I have with all of the specialization weapons is it just never feels like you have enough ammo. It feels like you're I don't know. I do feel like down in the Pentagon missions, I don't know if there's a different modifier, but I felt like I was getting so much specialist ammo that I was just using my specialization weapons constantly um, and my grenade launcher and stuff like that. Uh, so maybe it's going to be the same once I deck out this, uh, this technician, but um, I just really think that there's a lot of things about the technician that are going to make it um, best in slot. Uh, not to take anything away from the other ones, but I am kind of curious to if they'll ever um, re-look at some of those because it's really good. Uh, classified missions, that's if you only have the season pass. Uh, it's the Marina. Uh, there's a Marina mission and uh, the uh, JTF crashed helicopter in the Mexican embassy. Um, both of these missions are have really awesome environmental design. Um, the marina is really cool. Um, the cool thing about these classified missions is that there's always audio logs and a backpack charm to find. Uh, and in both of these missions, uh, the, the crash site, the Mexican embassy one, isn't too creative. Um, but I really, really love the marina. The way that you have to unlock the final audio log and the, uh, and, and the, the backpack charm, it's, it's really funny. And when I figured it out, I actually never personally figured it out. I had to uh, look it up on Reddit. And when I saw it and realized how you did it and how I should have known uh, from just paying attention, uh, it made me smile. It, it, that was a really cool way to do it. And I, it makes me happy to see some of that creativity in a game that, you know, kind of recycles its mechanics uh, a bit. So uh, very cool, like it a lot. Um, <clears throat> other changes, you know, the loot is definitely, um, I didn't realize how big of a difference it would make. Uh, I, what's really interesting is from like a, like a loot drop, um, feel, it feels, it feels just like division one again, but even better. Um, because if, if anything, just because of the UI presentation, but because we have named items now and there's exotics and gear sets and, um, all this change gear with new talents and all these, you know, different possibilities for builds and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure from like a PVP perspective, there's going to be, and I'll talk about this in a moment, but I'm sure a meta will be found for that. It sounds like the shotgun meta is back. Um, but beyond that, from a PVE perspective, what I liked about division one was that, yeah, like there, there was a meta, I guess, for PVE, uh, whether it was striker, you know, like a PVE striker, which was one of my favorite builds. Um, but I actually ended up at a point where I really enjoyed, I had like a damage dealing tactician build, which was a skill build. And, uh, which is why if you heard me before talking about the specialization, it gets me all giddy because it makes me think that I can revisit that potentially. But what I'm really excited, it, it just, it feels good. Um, I, I, I responded to Johan, uh, one of the CMs on Twitter and he said, you know, what, what do you like the most or the least about episode two? And, and I said, like, I've played a decent amount the last couple of days and it just feels more polished. Like it just feels smoother. I've been running hostage situations to get Intel to run bounties, um, to get, uh, to unlock points for my technician specialization. And 
I've really enjoyed running those hostage situations. And then I've really enjoyed running the, the bounties because they just drop so much loot. <laughs> like there's loot everywhere. And, and I've gotten a few named items so far uh, and they have really great talents on them. And so I can see this, this thing where I'm, it's going through my head. I'm sitting here like, like, oh man, I really want that named item, but I really wish it would have rolled this instead. So I could put this talent on there and then it'd be perfect for this build. And, and it's just, um, it, it's really interesting. Like from a balance and from a balance perspective, we're kind of getting into that. Um, I actually changed all my builds, my PVP, my skill build and my PVE, like gun build, um, uh, uh, two, three weeks ago. Uh, to match this change with the stack talents not working uh, if anything just to get used to it and because I was kind of bored uh, and I actually had success with those builds before the patch um, but now I mean it, I'm just doing some crazy damage with some of these builds um, to the point where you know I almost wonder if we're too powerful in a way um, but I don't care because it's fun um, I'm feeling like a player power fantasy that I haven't before in division two and in a lot of ways never felt in division one either um, when it comes to the balancing and stuff, I know for me, a big change and for a lot of people, um, the, 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 the multiple, um, uh, seeker mine, the, the one that splits into a bunch of little ones, um, everyone was mad about that because they were, they were fixing it. Um, so it would go back to its original description, which meant, um, when you throw it, it goes towards the enemies and then splits off. And when it splits off the little tiny uh, seeker mines would target a location and not the individual. So if they ran, it wouldn't catch up to them. Uh, and a lot of people were really pissed when they found out about that. Um, and what I found is that I've had to change my tactics just a little bit. Uh, what I found is that, uh, you either need to open up the firefight with this. So it sneaks up on them and gets them before they see it and can run. Uh, what I found is that if you actually throw it behind like a piece of cover that's near the enemies, they don't see it until the little mini ones come around the corner. Uh, and then they typically don't move because it has a really big radius, a big explosion radius. Um, and mine are really, I mean, I'm doing, I think, half a million in damage on uh, if, if, if everything's set up right and it's just destroying people. Or you use the seeker mine and uh, once you've begun the firefight and, and most of the enemies are behind cover. Um, so what I found is that it's just, it's maybe not as easy, but it basically is. And so that's what I've kind of noticed with a lot of the changes is that, you know, like everyone was freaking out about, about the secret minds changing and even me to a point. Um, but then it came out and I'm finding that it's really not any worse. And if anything, I just need to think a little bit more, which, you know, can't hurt any of us. It's kind of the same thing with the stack talents thing. You know, it's, you know, yeah, it was nice to just stack damage to elites and have a gun build that could melt, you know, you know, elite enemies, you know, way faster than even like purples, especially. But but that wasn't really challenging. It was if anything, it was just kind of simple minded. So what I really like now is this whole idea of being able to really make builds. Um, I think a lot of people are too fixated on like seeing a build that solid FPS or someone puts up and uh, even Hamish during the state of the game today was like, I just look for solid FPS to put out a build and then I just make that build. And that's cool. I don't, I mean, I'm sure I'll make a build. I see someone uh, talk about at some point, but the thing about the division is that it's kind of hard to farm the exact same gear as anyone else. So, you know, even in division one, I always tried to take inspiration from other people's builds, but very rarely have I ever like, completely built someone else's build you know word for word um one because it's kind of hard and you know it's almost impossible and two because i don't know like a lot of the people who share these builds and stuff are pc players um and that doesn't work for for console players like myself um and vice versa and so uh, you know I, I think that this patch is a really good spot for people i really wish in the division people made builds based on the gear they have and then try to improve those builds rather than being like, you know, wow, I can't get this exact piece that so-and-so told me to get. Uh, you know, I, I feel like that sometimes is kind of a, a, a topic of conversation, which um, I don't know. I think is kind of useless <laughs> personally, but I don't know. It's, you know, it's no offense to any of those people. It's if that's how they want to roll or 
they don't want to make their own builds and stuff and there's nothing wrong with that but i really encourage people to do it it's not as hard as you think and while you may not make a new meta you know maybe those builds that those people put on youtube are better um you know in theory but i'll tell you what you can definitely figure out builds that fit your play style really well um and can still do pretty darn well if you you know take the time to figure them out uh, the last thing is PvP. I'm going to be straight up. I basically haven't messed with this yet. I've been trying to, you know, check out the accounts and streams and Twitter feeds of the people who I feel like commentate on this stuff the most. Um, you know, the shotgun meta being back is a bummer. Um, I've always been weird about the shotgun metas because, you know, there there is a place for shotguns to be super, super powerful. Um, the problem is, is that you know, you need to make sure that, you know, SMGs at like short, medium range and ARs at medium to medium long and MMRs and rifles at long range are better. Uh, you know, it's super close up. If a shotgun wrecks me and I, cause I let them get that close, that's on me. But if there's stuff going on, whether it's, you know, people abusing armor builds and stuff like that to get in on your face and you can't do anything about it and then they blow you away. That's kind of a bummer, and that's kind of what it sounds like, but until I experience it myself, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, I suspect that they'll adjust things a little bit if it seems like it's you know, really that bad. One thing I highly encourage people to do is to maybe not take the word of people on Reddit or Twitter or even on Twitch and YouTube uh, too seriously. You need to keep in mind that there's a whole lot of people um, you know, in the community who are trying to be famous or stay famous, uh, in their own little world. And, um, unfortunately I found that that isn't always the most conducive thing to, um, you know, like the truth <laughs> or, or, or non sensational things and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, take what people are saying, uh, to heart, you know, in a way, but, you know, maybe go experience it yourself or, form your own opinion but overall i i really think episode two is interesting i i think from a content perspective maybe it's a little lacking i still think that it's going to be leading up to some really cool stuff um, but more than anything it's just i really feel like um, episode two has kind of made the game feel the way it should feel if that makes sense and beyond that what i really think is that episode two is kind of like the 1.4 of Division 2. Um, I, I've said before, I really do believe Division 2 has been in a better state from release to today than Division 1 probably ever was, in my personal opinion, even though I'm aware that that's fairly com uh, controversial, as I found, uh, but especially before 1.4. So I think that having this type of patch just kind of puts Division 2 over the top and um, while it's annoying that we may have to wait, uh, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, um, you know, it's annoying that we may have to wait for this game to get kind of revitalized and, and put where it's supposed to be. Um, it does at least make me really happy that I feel like um, the, the, the table is ready. The deck is set, you know, like, you know, now there's a platter for this game to be built on. Um, there's a there's a blueprint of okay we've we've really revamped a lot of this stuff maybe still need some adjustment but this is a nice base let's put some cool stuff on it and i really think I think that's what episode two is and um i think they should be really proud of it um there's gonna be naysayers and, and people who hate it that's fine let them hate it um i i know uh, we'll talk about this in a moment but uh, I think it's a great patch. I'm excited about it. I wish there was more, obviously, but I think it's absolutely worth playing. If you've been gone for a while, maybe at least come back and check it out and uh, and see what you think. All right, uh, so here's the other bit of news, even though I've kind of rambled on for quite a bit already. But um, there was uh, so Ubi Day in Japan happened a couple weeks ago, and uh, <laughs> as per usual, uh, there was, you know, the, the episode two, two trailer leaked or was released earlier than it was probably supposed to. And, um, and what also came of this was a article, uh, an interview that Julian did, uh, with a Japanese website called Four gamer, or at least that's the rough translation I got, um, where 
uh, basically he mentions that Coney Island, uh, Brooklyn, and some other locations are going to be part of episode three. So from the trailer we got, uh, we knew that Coney Island was in play. Uh, what's interesting about this is, you know, he kind of, I, I guess this confirms Brooklyn and some other neighborhoods as well, potentially. Um, but Brooklyn and Coney Island are not like connected. So I'm really curious to what the scope of this is going to be. I'm, you know, I'm kind of trying to keep my, uh, my heartstrings in, in, uh, under control. I don't want to get too excited, um, because we have been, I, you know, from a content, from a mission, from, you know, I, I really don't think episode one and two have been disappointing. I think they've both been great releases, um, but I do think the expedition was disappointing. And I do think the Pentagon is kind of underwhelming, even though I think it's actually pretty cool. So, you know, I'm trying to kind of keep my hopes in check. Uh, what I am hoping is that, you know, especially if he's talking about it and they, and they made, you know, such a big deal of the announcement of episode three at E3 this year. Um, I'm hoping that this is the A team. Uh, not, not to be a jerk and, and call Sophia and whoever worked on the expedition the B team, but you know, it's kind of what it seems like they are, especially from the results. But um, despite how good that work is, don't get me wrong, it looked great. But I'm really hoping that I hope New York City is is what Massive has been working on for the last you know ever since they wrapped up you know quote unquote wrapped up Division Two. Uh, that, you know, they've had a bunch of people on NYC. They're making some really cool stuff. Um, and and knowing that it's going to be in multiple locations, I hope we at least just get a taste of Manhattan. Like, I understand that they can't remake the entire Division One map and let us run wild. You know, I, I understand why that's not realistic. Um, I, don't get me wrong. I would love it. But I don't, I just, I'm not going to expect that. I think that's too much. Um, but man, it'd be cool to at least step foot in, you know, Camp Hudson again or something like that. So we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, he also did mention that article in an answer. Uh, now let me be clear. I read these answers through a Google translator. So there's a lot of stuff about, especially Asian languages that Google translator doesn't do very well. Um, at least when it transfers it to English. Um, but it also mentions along the lines of that we will be hunting Keener, but gave no specific details. So we already kind of knew that, um, you know, they actually didn't say that in the trailer that they released at E3, but it's heavily, heavily, heavily insinuated. Um, and now we basically know. Uh, there was also a bunch of intel that Keener dropped um, in DC if you went around and picked up all the audio logs um, and you found that... Uh, if anything, it was kind of a kick in the nuts that we thought we were going to come to DC and have some big confrontation with Keener. Um, uh, it's by the way, Oh, Hey, by the way, I'm going back to New York. <laughs> um, which, you know, I think should have been kind of a hint to everyone what was happening, uh, with division, with division two. Uh, and now we know episode three. So, you know, something that you want a little bit, I think it's uh, the Coney Island and Brooklyn thing is kind of interesting. Um, I, I really do think they need to give us information about episode three, sooner than later even if it's hints or even if it's teasers tease us for the love of god hype us up you know episode two is really cool um but there's a exceptional lack of hype for it and it's because there's not you know you can only get so hyped about a named gun right it's a really good change for the game you know there's so many amazing changes but you know i remember seeing people talk about how there was kind of no hype for episode two and you know, maybe there wasn't really any to be had, you know, unfortunately. Um, but but it's got to be there for episode three. I mean, I'm assuming episode three comes in maybe late January, early February. Um, and if that's the case, then start dropping, drop a, you know, a 10 second audio clip from Keener on the official channel with no video. You know, something teasing us and saying, hey, I see that you guys have come to Coney Island. You know, it's nice to see you and just drop that in like the beginning of December and then the end of December, right before Christmas, be like, you know, this is our second Christmas together agents. It's nice to see you back. You know, just give us, give us some stuff, man. I'm telling you that while a lot of people I know don't care, I, I think more than that do and would really love that kind of thing. So that's just my advice. Take it for what you will. I doubt there's any devs who still listen to me at this point. 
Okay, so uh, talking about listening to me, why don't you listen to a mid-roll for about 30 seconds, and then I will be right back. Okay, so some community topics and discussion. Okay, so last week <laughs> there was a, a a hubbub of type of sorts. So what I would, what I'm gonna talk about is just kind of my my thoughts and stuff on. I think the overarching discussion was a bunch of people kind of calling out the team, mostly for telling people to play other games, um, and then for a bunch of other kind of side comments. Um, so what's interesting about that is that, um, if you listen to the last podcast, um, I said the same thing. Um, I think if the division does not excite you and you don't have fun playing it, you should go play other stuff. What I also think is that if it, if you do enjoy it, you should still play other stuff. Um, I do. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about modern warfare after this. I'm so excited about call of duty, which is makes me look at the calendar and try to remember what year it is. Um, but I don't think there's a single game on the market that can be played 24 seven, not by regular people. I know wow has its people, even destiny Two, I'm sure has its people. Um, I saw someone said that they have 1300 hours in division two. Um, on the day that they said that I calculated that that's six hours a day since March 15th. That's if you skipped a day, you made up those six hours a different day. Like that's too much. I love this game, but I've got like 300 hours in it. And I'm more than satisfied. I feel like I've already got my money's worth personally. Um, I don't get me wrong. I want a lot more stuff from this game, but you know, someone having a thousand more hours than I do at this point, um, as much as I love the game, I have no idea what those people have done. And I know it's not this, just this one person who made that comment. I'm sure there's a bunch of people who have over a thousand hours, but that's too much. That's, that's almost asking to hate the game because even after three or 400 hours, I, I've definitely got stuff I could do. I, I could easily grind right now and probably get to five, maybe 600 hours. But after that, I would kind of feel like I've gotten what we can get so far. Um, and so, you know, I don't see anything wrong with saying, Hey, you know, if you don't like the game, go, you know, I hope you find something you enjoy. I've said that multiple times to people. Um, and I, and I've, and I saw that, you know, them, you know, the CMs or whoever saying this was painted in such a negative light. Um, and I personally, you know, it's just me and I haven't seen everything. Um, but I've never seen any of the community managers say that to people who weren't just being straight toxic assholes. Um, I've never seen it in a situation where someone says, Hey, you know, I, I like the game, but I feel like I don't have anything to do. And, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, this one thing I don't really care for very much. And then like Yannick be like, fuck you, go play another game. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't think that's what's happening. Um, you know, someone showed me an example of, of what they were talking about. And um, it was Julian responding to Wids and, and Wids kind of basically saying he just doesn't like what's coming. And, um, and, and, and Julian, I thought, responding very constructively and very nicely. Um, I, I didn't see the controversy in his, in his statement. Um, so I don't know. Um, now, for full clarity, I also am aware of the person who <laughs> told Julian that Division 2 was a flop, and Julian responded um, along the lines of saying that his dick was a flop, uh, or that his dick was floppy or something. Um, you know, that, that probably wasn't cool, and, and Julian did uh, address it, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but um, I, I really don't... I don't know. I, I understand there, you know, there are people... Um, like uh like like paris uh who's you know big podcaster and um lieutenant buzz lightbeer and, and some other people really kind of jumped on this narrative and um i believe that they believe or or that they feel their opinion i uh, those those people are all just as passionate if not more so than myself and um i but i don't i i don't i don't see it i don't see it the way that was being portrayed 
um, I, I saw some, you know, statements, not just from them, but from a lot of people of like, you know, they, they, they aren't transparent. They don't interact enough. They, they, they react negatively. Um, and, and I'm sure they do. I've seen, you know, the, the community managers and, and even Julian and people, you know, get stick their foot in their mouths here and there. Um, I've also seen, um, them make playful, sarcastic statements and people uh, take them out of context, either purposefully or ignorantly, um, and and really try to make a big deal out of it and try to make them look bad um, to kind of back up this narrative. Um, and, and even some of those people being some of the most toxic people who have ever been involved in this community. So I, I just, I, I felt like there was a little bit of sensationalism going on with this whole topic and maybe a little bit of, you know, patting people, you know, people patting themselves on the back a little bit and showing everyone how interesting their opinions were. Um, but that's just my opinion, I guess. And maybe I'm ignorant to things. Maybe there's things I haven't seen. And, um, I, I'm, I'm definitely not alleging that, you know, most of these people, I don't think anyone had bad intentions. I don't think that they were just trying to make, you know, get some attention. Um, but I, I definitely just, I don't know. I just don't, um, I'm not seeing what some people are seeing, I guess. Maybe that's my fanboy goggles. Maybe it's something else. Um, I would like to think it's because I've, I feel like I've seen a lot of this stuff and maybe interpreted it differently, but I don't know. Well, I will say what's interesting was um, after Julian's floppy dick conversation on Twitter, which was really interesting for me because I saw some people reacting like, oh, yikes, that's unprofessional that's a bad look. And then I saw a lot of other people being like, yeah, Julian, people are assholes. Um, and I see it both ways. I mean, he is the creative director for this game for this, you know, relatively large game, or at least in scope or at least in a monetary investment from Ubisoft. And, um, you know, maybe that isn't the way to react. Um, at, at the same time, if, um, I, I dare people, <laughs> uh, to delve into Twitch chat to delve into YouTube comments, um, to delve into almost any post that the official channel or anyone who's known, uh, who's a dev or CM, uh, I, I dare you to look at the comments that they get every single day, all day, and to look up the ads that they get from people and the call outs and the shit. And what I suspect is that that floppy dick situation um, probably had very little to do with that person. I looked up the person who who initiated the, the the conversation, and it's just a troll. I'm sure it's someone's alt account that they use because they they do have a floppy dick. Um, I, I've interacted with multiple accounts that are clearly probably more prominent people in the community who are just too big a cowards to put their name on something. Um, in this account that he responded to, looks that way. Um, but even then, you know, there, there, there is a mute button, there is a block button. Um, but at the same time, I'm as guilty as anyone of not taking those options and standing up for myself. Um, so I see it kind of both ways. Um, what was interesting in, in Julian's kind of, uh, apology, I don't even want to say it was an apology. He basically just said, you know, you know, what I've learned over the last few days is that we need to all treat each other with respect and um, you know, to try to, you know, work towards making things better. Um, I even saw Julian resp respond to some people who were disappointed with his initial uh, reaction, um, personally, which I thought was really cool. Um, I suspect that we saw Julian in a moment of extreme frustration. Um, and what was really interesting and in, in his, he made like multiple tweets, uh, a little tweet storm. Um, and, and what I picked up from it, and I don't want to interpret his feelings, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but kind of, I, what I felt from his, his statement was kind of a, Hey, you know, we know this, is, this game is not where we wish it was. Uh, it's not where you guys obviously want it to be. Um, but it's coming. That, that's the goal. That's, we have a plan. We're working towards what this game should be. Um, you know, I, I really, I see so many comments about, you know, you know, how could they make the same mistakes as division one? How, you know, why did they not learn and, and all that? And I can, I guess I can see why, you, why you would interpret, you know, the current state of the game in that way. But I, I really think that's, that's such a, um, such a simple way to look at it and, and maybe doesn't really represent 
you know, the challenges that they're facing and stuff like that. Um, it, it's really interesting before division two came out, there were a lot of people who were basically saying that, Oh man, it looks like it's just division 1.5. You know, it's the same thing that people said about destiny two when it came out, even though that was <clears throat> true. Uh, obviously they've bounced back pretty well, but, um, what's interesting now is the narrative has changed so much of, you know, not that, that the, it's not that the division two is division 1.5, but in fact, people wish it was division 1.5 now weird, you know, <laughs> it, uh, it, it really does kind of crack me up. And, um, you know, I felt like I saw it coming a mile away. So, you know, people were worried that it was just going to be division one in a new city. Um, and what we ended up getting, at least in my opinion, is, you know, almost a new game, uh, you know, entirely, you know, there's obviously some holdovers, um, between the games. Um, and I think this newest patch actually even pushed us more towards that, but I, it seems to me that, um, the, the biggest issue that some people have with the game is that it's too different from the first game, uh, which is kind of what I'm getting at with the mistakes made in the first game, not being experienced for the new game. I, I, I think that the new game is probably too different from the first one um, to, to really say that they should have carried over every bad choice from the first one and learn from it. Uh, I think that they, unfortunately with these games seem like the devs kind of have to make mistakes and then they figure it out from there. Uh, Warframe is a prime example of that over years. Destiny one was an example of that. Destiny two was an example of that. Uh, Anthem should have been, but it seems like it's just never going to quite get the support that these other games I mentioned got. Um, we'll see about Breakpoint, that whatever that thing is. But I, I just, I just, I think that, that I, I understand why there's people who feel that way, you know, feel that, you know, Julian and, and the whole team shouldn't be making some of the mistakes they're making. But I think that's kind of a simplistic way to look at it. Um, but, you know, like I said before, maybe that's my, my fanboy goggles. So, uh, I'm glad that Julian kind of made a statement. I thought his statement was interesting. I think it's worth looking at if you haven't already. I think it kind of gives, at least it gave me the impression of, you know, that they're kind of on the same page as a lot of us. You know, they realize that, you know, this game's cool. It's good in most, in a lot of ways. Um, but there's a lot of other ways it could be much better. Um, and it, it really doesn't seem like, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've seen so far um, has kind of lived up to that. A uh, couple little topics here. Modern Warfare is coming, uh, you know, in about a week. Um, I'm super pumped for that. I'm going to be playing the crap out of that game. Uh, I'll probably be streaming it quite a bit uh, or just playing it on my own because I can't wait to, you know, re, re upgrade my M4A1 and get back to where I had it before. I had loadouts, I had a silent loadout and kind of a, you know, a sneaky one. And, oh, I can't wait to do all that. It was, that game was the first time I had felt that way about a game since like Call of Duty 4 or even Modern Warfare 2. Um, so that's coming. I'm super pumped about that. So if you watch the stream, whenever I have a chance to get on, uh, definitely expect to see some Modern Warfare. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the listener question um, from Dark Knight. Uh, what other hobbies do you enjoy and will baby diesel be giving her view on a new update this time so no uh no baby diesel this time i actually started to record this podcast uh like eight hours ago uh but she lost her her mind about halfway through and so i scrapped it and uh just made made a new one here slightly before midnight on wednesday so um, what other hobbies do I enjoy? Um, I love playing sports. Um, I played soccer since I was four years old and even, uh, in my late twenties, I was still playing. Haven't actually played in a couple of years. Um, I want to get back into it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the main reason I haven't played in a while is I've just been busy. I've also put on a bunch of weight and I have some pretty bad uh, knee and ankle issues from, uh, from playing soccer for 25 years <laughs> straight. Um, and so I know my extra weight that I have right now would really, um, there's a slight chance from some testing I've had done, uh, that I may either have a partially or fully torn, uh, ACL in one of my knees. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's a ligament that helps hold your knee together. Um, if you're strong enough, or if you aren't doing athletic things, you can actually get by with a torn one. Um, 
I still do play sports. I, I still play volleyball, sand volleyball in a local uh, local place. And um, uh, Bay Diesel actually does the same thing. Uh, she's a little more built for it. She's about six foot tall. Um, I am not, I'm about 5'10". And um, uh, you know, the knee thing hasn't affected me too much there. It's a pretty soft thing and you don't quite cut or move at the same speed as you do in soccer. Uh, so soccer, uh, volleyball, uh, I, I do enjoy working out. I just don't do it and I haven't in a while. Um, I really enjoy sports, watching sports as well. So um, football is my main sport, American football. Um, Patriots are my team, so please don't unfollow just because of that. Uh, I swear I liked them before they were really good. Uh, my rebellious picking of team to make my dad mad when I was like 10 just happened to make me pick uh, the Patriots, and it was because I liked their helmets at the time. Um, and then it just turned out that I ended up making the most uh, probably lucky fan choice ever, uh, if you if you count luck by championships. Um, beyond that, you know, my life has kind of become hanging out with Baby Diesel, hanging out with my wife, um, doing it work around my house and around my yard. Um, I, I have a job. I'm a social worker. And I work with people in a very specific. Um, uh, way of life uh, and I really enjoy it. I feel like I make a big difference uh, Spending time with the family and stuff like that if there are any old hobbies I used to have that I would pick back up. Um, it'd probably be working out again um, uh, I, I love cooking. I really like cooking. Unfortunately my cooking the last couple of years has not been very healthy um, <laughs> uh, But I, I love cooking. I, I'm, I'm a terrible baker though um I don't know. I'm kind of boring. I really don't like to travel. I'm pretty lame when it comes to that. Obviously, games are a hobby I enjoy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like cars a lot, uh, but I drive a Kia. I actually really like my car a lot. I have a Kia Optima. Um, it's a really great car. It's the best car I've ever owned. Uh, pretty close. I had a, a Mazda 3S uh, for a while, and that was pretty awesome. A little go-kart. Um, I do like cars a lot. I watch a lot of car videos and I'm just kind of a tech enthusiast in general, not just with games. Um, I love watching uh, content creators talk about new PC stuff, new cell phone stuff, new audio stuff. I love audio. Um, I'm a big, I'm, I'm like, I'm the worst audiophile ever. I love audio and I care a lot about sound quality, um, but I don't do anything about it anymore. And, and college, my dorm was the one that had like full like 7.1 surround sound set up. I had optical out and all this cool stuff. Maybe it was only 5.1, but I, I had the subwoofer, you know, like you know, no one else had a subwoofer in my hallway, you know, like it's a party room. Um, and my cars, I always decked them out with nice stereo systems and speakers and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, there's other stuff going on. So, Thanks for asking. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I post uh, places for people to ask questions on YouTube, my Patreon, on Twitter, on my Discord. Uh, I think that's all the places. So there should be plenty of places for you to ask questions. And uh, please uh, take uh, take advantage of it. I love answering questions, even if it's like this one, where it has nothing to do with the division. Uh, some content and personal updates. Uh, Baby Diesel has her two-month appointment uh, very soon, and I'm really excited to see how she's come along the last month. Um, she's huge. Uh, she's become a she's a very tall baby. Uh, my entire family is tall. My wife's entire family is tall. Uh, I got hit with the short stick for some reason, so um, I'm expecting to be looking up at my daughter when she's like 12. Um, I am trying to get back in the streams with Bay Diesel going back to work. And she has a bunch of stuff she has to do for work after hours. So it tends to leave me busy. Um, and then I'm very busy right now. I'm going to be even busier here in a month or so at work. So things might be a little crazy. Um, so I'm doing my best. I'm really sorry I, I don't stream more, but I'm trying to get on. I hate seeing the sub number um, because I know that people have stopped subbing because I'm just not around. I don't blame them. Um, but I was really happy with where we were at for a while and, um, but I'm not earning it and I understand. So hopefully I uh, can get back on that horse a bit. And I really, I really do want to start putting out Intel insight videos again. If you go to my YouTube, it's just YouTube type in bond diesel. My page will pop up for division one. And even a little bit of division two, I did these Intel insight videos 
where I would listen to audio logs and stuff like that and talk about how I think that impacts the story and so on and so forth. Um, I did a few for Division 2, but I kind of fell off months ago just being busy. Um, but they're really fun videos to make, and um, I think they're a good way for people to hear that audio um, and then kind of hear someone's opinion on it, uh, even if you know it's not true or if it differs from their own. Uh, so be on the lookout. I'll try to start putting some of those out again. And that's what we have. Longer show than I expected, honestly. So uh, if you want to support the podcast or my other content, please check out patreon.com slash the echo cast. If you are on iTunes or any other podcast provider that allows you to rate and review the podcast, please do so. Uh, obviously, I'd prefer uh, good things, but if you have bad things, go nuts, I guess. Um, but you know those ratings and those reviews really help me get noticed, get pushed up in the algorithm. Um, and you know we're in a good spot now, but I'd always be happy to, uh, for more people to hear. Uh, I am Bon Diesel on Twitch, where I try to stream two, three, maybe four times a week. I'm also Bon Diesel on Twitter, where you can catch my personal thoughts, uh, some state of the game live tweets that I do every week, and the occasional foot in my own mouth. That is at Bon Diesel. Um, well, and uh, that's all I have. So, until next time. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.